Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am loud at 3 o'clock in the morning, people. But thank you for tuning in. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I am Jay Lee. This is my review for Power Season 5, Episode 6. It was a good episode. I got through it faster than normal. Usually, I don't get done like watching and putting notes in until like 4 a.m. And it's only 3.10, bitch. I feel accomplished, okay? After I was live on YouTube earlier today. And all these things that happened today. Um, you know, I'm happy to be here with y'all. So, have a seat. Get your little glass of wine. You know what I'm get your little wine cooler. Get you a beer if you a dude or whatever. Um, get your little snack. Yeah, it's been a little gentle pulling cup or whatever. Get you something to snack on. And, or if you're having a long drive or whatever, have a seat. Because y'all know it's going to be a minute. Um, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to ignore my purse and my pillows. I just, you know whatever but if you have not done so already please take a moment to subscribe to my channel it does not take any time at all you just hit that subscribe button and then also do not forget to hit the notification button because that lets you know when my videos are up i know last week power was up very very late i didn't put it up until like eight o'clock which is not typical um i was dead tired last week so that's why it was up so late but this one will be up no later than like 5 a.m. because I'm going to upload it and wait for it to upload um, before I go to bed. So, yeah. Um, what else? I think that's really it. So, let's get started on this particular episode. Um, I don't see where this season is going. Like, it's just, it's kind of all over the place for me. I was talking to Alex, you know, Alex Rodgers on YouTube. Um, we was on his Instagram live uh, last week. And he had asked, like, you know, what do you think about, we talked about power or whatever. And he did say, like, what do you think of the season? I said, well, I don't know yet. Because, you know, I don't get the point of the season just yet. And I still don't. I mean, I'm just, this, this whole, this episode confused me more than before. It was good. Like, don't get me wrong. But I'm like, I know the show is like approved for like a total of seven seasons so far. We don't know if there'll be a season eight. So, I don't know if they're trying to start wrapping up the series as a whole. Um, but, to, I, bitch, I was like, what's going on here? What's happening? Then? That was how I was a couple, a couple of scenes here. The beginning starts off where the last episode left off with ghosts at uh, who else was that Karen <laughs> goes to Angela's house and you know I guess this is this is way of, his way of trying to be honest and he's like you know the pain of Raina's death is you know what I'm saying it's getting worse and worse and worse it isn't getting better you know what I'm saying how I went to prison it's ever since I got locked up you know what I'm saying everything has just went wrong I keep losing things and losing people in my life or whatever and you know I feel like you, you know, you, I know you can't, you, when she says, I know you can't say sorry or whatever because you don't know the truth because I didn't tell you the truth. I'm looking like, well, where the fuck is this going? Like, what's, what are you doing, ghost? You know, he brings up how saying, I'm saying you, I went to the pad and he said, what I make my mistakes at? And my first mistake, that ain't the truth. That was not your first mistake, but it was, it was one of your mistakes. He said, you know, but a big mistake was when I lied to you. I didn't leave you because I didn't love you. You know what I'm saying? That's not, why I, that's not why I left. I didn't leave you for Tasha. I didn't leave you for, for my kids. So you go on to tell, to tell your mistress that you didn't leave her to be with your wife or for the betterment of your children. You piece of shit. Um, but we love you, ghost, but you're a piece of shit. He tells her, like, a man threatened my life and he threatened your life. So, in hindsight, I had to break up with you so that he wouldn't mess with you and it worked. But when he said that, what kind of pissed me off was that he said it, but which was true, but you protected her, but not your family. Like, you made it so where Milan can get to your girlfriend, but you didn't mind him bringing his crazy-ass girlfriend into your damn house where your kids sleep with your wife. So, I mean, the fuck, goes. I was just, I was like, I, when he said that, I was like, 
I, I did that to protect you. But I'm like, yeah, but you didn't protect Tasha, Tyreek Rayner, or, or Yes, or, or Tasha's mom who be over the house. And I was just like, you mother, f bruh. Anyway, that made me so upset. I was like, you old, ooh, it made me so mad. Anyway, he then say that was my last lie. No, it wasn't. That was a lie within itself, coach. You've been lying for a long ass time, bruh. Don't get me wrong. Um... He's done some good, but you've done a lot of bad. It does not weigh them. It doesn't weigh each other out. So she's like, "Why didn't you tell me, bitch? What were you gonna do? What were you gonna do, Angela? What? Because he didn't tell. He didn't tell her who it was. He didn't say the circumstances of it. All he said was someone threatened my life, and in turn threatened your life. So I had to leave you alone to keep you safe. <laughs> oh, so who cares? I really don't. You know. Anyway, she like, I have to go to bed, Jamie. And I'm like, and he look like, but you can sleep on the couch. I'm like, oh, you're going to let him, girl. She in her bedroom, he on the couch. They both toss and turn. I guess they both couldn't sleep. But we don't care. Look, no one cares about the love sick puppies of Tasha, not Tasha, of Angela and Ghost. No one wants them to be together. Like, at all. Like, we don't want that. Like, at all. No one gives zero fucks if Tasha, damn it, not Tasha, if, which, a little bit of Tasha, if Ghost and Angela ends up together. If this ain't a love story, bruh. We don't, we, I, <clears throat> I know they want to show, oh, they're just so in love with each other, and it's torture to be in the same room together, and they can't be together. I don't give a fuck. Not today. And I won't give a fuck tomorrow. Anyway, in the morning, they wake up. He in the living room woke. She in the bedroom woke. Hey, ghost. No. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Angela. And did you sleep? No, not so much. Ooh. Again, no one cares. He, she then says, you aren't the only one who haven't been honest about things as of late. You then hear knock, knock, knock at the door. And who is it? It's Tasha. Now, Tasha come on in. As a, we had to talk. Da, 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 da. She's like, Tasha, let me explain. Because, again, Tasha walk in. And then she realized her husband is sitting in the damn room, in the living room. And she like, what is he doing here? And she like, what is she doing here? It's a whole little threesome that you don't want to know about. So, um, Ghost then finds out that Tasha and Angela been working together. You know, Angela, like, you know what I'm saying? Tasha is not what you think. We're not sleeping together, whatever. Um, he like, when did this happen? What's going on? So, they explain the whole thing of Tasha did this. As a, We all know what happened before. He's like, why didn't y'all, like, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't y'all tell me? And they say, we thought we couldn't trust it, that you would just fuck things up. So, we've been handling it on our own. And... As it says, like, you know, I thought that you killed Ray Ray and I was going to snitch because why? I'm a snitch. And then he, she said, when I went to Tasha about it, Tasha said that it wasn't you. It was actually Tariq. So we both wanted to protect Tariq because it didn't make sense to have Ray to be killed and have Tariq go to prison. But in hindsight, fuck Tariq. Tariq don't get not two fucks about anybody. Okay. Tariq only care about, Tariq care about him, Kanan and Dre. Let the little motherfucker go off and get killed. Bye. Bye. We ain't gonna cry. You can die. I mean, he, Tariq doesn't, and I get that's their son. You do not give up on your children. I completely get that. But your child gives zero fucks about you, your well being. If you get it, he gives a fuck about nothing except himself. Tariq is such a spoiled ass little brat. It makes no sense. And I don't blame Ghost for not telling Tariq about his childhood as the reason Tariq acting this way. Tariq old enough to be smelling, he's smelling his goddamn stuff. He got some coochie from that girl from Ray Ray Cousin who, let's hope she ain't pregnant somewhere, hauled off in the corner somewhere crying because she, she pregnant to do it herself. Anyway, he got some coochie from that girl and he has all this loyalty to everybody except his parents because, oh, I didn't know y'all was poor when y'all grew up and you had to sell drugs. Who gives a fuck what someone had to do as a kid? Bruh. Tariq is a piece of shit, like a dead is a piece of shit. Okay, the tree fell and the apple fell off, and Tariq was a goddamn mini drag. I mean, was it was a mini ghost? It's the strangest shit ever. Because again, Ghost and Tasha are doing and have been doing what they needed to do to keep them their kids out that life, and Tariq doing everything in his power to get dragged into it. So if Tariq want to want to go to prison? Let us go to prison. Bye, bro. Don't drop the soap. Anyway, I was all the all the tirade. They tell Ghost to let them handle things for him to back off and let them do it. We got this. And then he's sitting on the couch on this one side. You have Tasha and Angela facing him 
on the side together. I'm also not here for the goddamn dynamic duo of Angela and Tasha. Look, I don't need, you know what I'm saying, thing one, thing two, Cagney and Lacey working together to take anybody else down because I feel like they both working off the wrong emotion. They don't trust ghosts. In hindsight, they don't trust each other. They just need each other. So, it ain't even a real partnership and you just, I'm just waiting for it to crumble because y'all all are in this together but y'all trying to work things separately. That ain't how you put a puzzle together. It isn't, okay? It's When you have missing pieces, but the puzzle doesn't work. And this is the problem with the group, okay? The threesome of Angela, Tasha, and Ghost will never work because don't any of them trust the other one. One way or another, they all have some kind of secret they're hiding that the group don't know. It's just bullshit. Anyway, they tell James going by his business because they need to work together so that Angela can prep Tasha because she's going to be questioned by the police about her gun. Mm-hmm. 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 Dre and Alicia meet up. Okay. And she's like, look, what the fuck, Dre? He like, man, look, Diego came up in here, whatever. He think I set him up with that damn gold gun. I don't know why he got that from. That's some bullshit. It wasn't me. I'm shaggy. It wasn't me. I didn't do anything. She like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. Um, I know you didn't do it. My thing, the first time she would have said, I know you didn't do it. How you know? Did you do it? But Dre is still stupid and y'all, so you don't, you don't get anything. But then she says, you know, I know you didn't do it. But however, why does Diego think Ghost and Tommy set him up, with the, set us up with the fans? Like, why does he think that? Dre like, I I don't know. Dre, you're a liar. And she know it and you're a horrible liar. She's like, I told you no war. I told you that. And if Ghost and Tommy get hit and if Diego's mad and he goes after them, what do you think would happen when they're being protected by the Syrians? I'm like, that's true. Again, Dre don't think. This is also how we know for 100% of a fact that the Jimenez never put those cards to Ghost Tommy or Kanan, it was Dre and um, Cristobal who made it seem as if it came from them because they would have, she would have known something, she would have just went after them if, if that was if that was the situation. And it was just, so I'm like, okay, Dre full of shit. Anyway, she was like, I know you. I know how you play both sides against the middle, but you need to find somebody else to blame. Again, so she know Dre lied and told Diego it was Ghost and Tommy so that he would want to take them out. She not dumb. She's like, but however, you need to pick somebody else because we not going after Ghost and Tommy. It ain't gonna happen, bro. We told you no fucking war. We not trying to get in war because it's not going to war with just Ghost and Dre. It's the Syrians. Little do they know the Syrians don't want to fuck with Ghost and Tommy. That's all. Everybody see everybody doing stuff and they don't know what the other one doing. And it's all this miscommunication if you ask me. So, we see Tommy still being stupid. Tommy's stupid every season in one way or the other. You know, he is hanging out with his old ass snitch of a daddy. I mean, yo daddy is a whole snitch. He And he not only a snitch, he is sneaky snitch. He is sneaky snitch because he's trying to figure out. It's not snitching because I don't really like you. Because you, even though you're my son, I don't know you. So it ain't that bad because I don't give fuck no fucks about you. That's a sneaky snitch if you ask me. It's a snitch you want to make you feel like, oh, I love you, son. You're I've, I've missed all this time with you, son. You a sneaky little rat, you Teresa, you. Anyway, Daddy Snitch is in the car with Tommy. And they are looking. Like, he's like, I need you to be a lookout. Your ass to work. He, he, look. Teresa got to be every bit of, of 76. Okay? His eyes can't work. I'm 36 and my I got to squint to see my goddamn Godfather poster on my wall. He can't see shit. He going to say, well, I need you to be looking at, um, look at this car. Look at that car right there. This is my dude, Dre car. I need you to make sure that if anybody comes out, that you call me so that I know some stuff. So I know to get out the way. All right, I got you, son. You know, sneaky bastard. Anyway, we didn't see the time he goes and put the tracker that he got from Angela onto Dre's car, thinking that Dre would lead her to the Jimenez. And I'm like, bruh, okay. So we see he put the tracker on Dre's car. He then takes Angela and says, you know what I'm saying, turn the tracker on or whatever. So she gets the message. She's with Tasha. Tasha feel like his ghost texting her, like, we need to talk, whatever. 
he never gonna leave you alone. She's like, oh no, it's not, it's not um him. It's work again. She's lying. She don't want Tasha to know that she's also working with Tommy, and Tommy don't want them to know that Angela went to him. Everybody's lying to someone. Everyone is lying to someone. And if you think about it, all of them working with Angela. Who was the sneakiest of them all? Cause she's a goddamn gone agent. But whatever. Um, Tasha like, uh, no, she said, you know what, Tasha, I'm trying to be honest with you, me and Jamie are not sleeping together, we're not, to Tasha said, girl, I told you before, I don't care, but prep me on this damn police conversation, so that's what I need to worry about, fuck James, fuck you, I don't care, okay, um, Rashad and Dre goes to visit Ghost, right, at the club. Now, see, Rashad went there. When Rashad reached out to Ghost, like, we need to talk. He said, when I called him, uh, Dre, he told me to bring you. He said, look, I'm not finna be a fight with that man, argue with that man. If that's what it's about, I'm gonna leave. He like, no, 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 no. Again, he asked me to bring you. So, I don't know. He's like, but anyway, how did you and Ghost, well, how did you and James meet? Oh, uh, well, I worked for an associate of his. And, you know what I'm saying, that, and, and that ended. And then I came to work, to work for James. He's like... Andre, he told me you sold drugs. <laughs> what business were you in that you came over here? I'm like, okay, take. Want to be a little bit professional? He's like, look, you know what I'm saying? He had clubs. I was going to work for the club. That's all that it is. But I'm like, I feel like Dre never really answered the question per se. But, you know, take kind of let it go. Um, it was what it was. So, you know, when James come down, looking all Debonair, he looks he looks put together. You know, he had been a little rugged. He's been a little, you know, some off kilter. He looked good, okay? Full beard. His hair look all nice and pretty. Suit all buttoned up and stuff. Looking like a good old snack in these streets. I know let me smell Amari Hardwick. Um, and Tate tells Ghost that the people who are donating, donating, damn it, the people who are donating to the Queen Child Project for some reason are all being audited. He like it happens sometimes. He's like, so as long as your books are on the up and up, you know, it's not a big deal. Like, so hopefully your books are all clean and all put together. He's like, oh yeah, you know, no problem, whatever. We see that whole thing and then Tate leaves. However, there's a later on scene between, to add a pop, pop this in right here, when they are talking because again, Ghost acted the plum de fool last episode. He got drunk and he kind of, you know what I'm saying? I fucking killed you. You know what I'm saying? That whole thing. It was funny. The way Ghost hand up Tate is the same way Lorenz Tate hand up that girl in their presence. I'll kill you, girl. Same thing. Anyway, that just popped my head right now. But, <laughs> um, you know, Tate is still mad at how Ghost acted. So, Ghost is like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, the loss of my daughter has me just emotional. Like, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. How about if I donate, you know what I'm saying, 50 grand to your campaign uh, as a gesture? And, of course, Tate takes it. Tate dirty, if you ask me. Anyway, so we see that little short of scene later. But, anyway, back to Ghost and now Dre. So, Tate is left this meeting and he's like hey Dre can we talk real quick I'm like why you say that so calm like we want Dre dead wasn't the whole end of season 4 about wanting Dre to be killed didn't that is the reason didn't that was Lord Jesus wasn't that the reason that Ghost Tommy and Kanan joined forces and began to got them three amigos was to take out Dre because Dre was the enemy 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 this season we are six episodes in and y'all have only tried to kill that man twice just you know just twice it's some bullshit i'm like y'all just forgot about anyway and this how could ghost you have you have killed y'all killed mulan y'all killed um oh what was the first guy's name i can't remember the first big bad guy him i can't think what his name is right now because it's three o'clock in the morning but y'all have killed major people y'all can't kill dre y'all can't kill dre Anyway, you know, he told Dre how basically he wants to call the truce because, you know what I'm saying, he wants the, the Queen Child Project to be worked with for potential for Raina. You know, it's all for Raina. Dre gonna say, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with her getting killed. But I don't think us, I don't think that's a good idea. Dre, you're a fucking liar. You, the fact that Dre won't even acknowledge the fact that he never told Ghost or anyone that Kanan was alive. Not only did he not tell them that Kanan was alive, he didn't tell them that Kanan was hanging out with Tariq. That, how can you not say that you had something to do with 
introducing Tariq to Kanan, to Ray Ray, and then Ray Ray, who then took Tariq and had them doing robberies and shit, and then he ended up getting Raina killed. So you had a hand in it. You didn't put a goddamn trigger, bro, but you introduced the devil to the kid, okay? Ray Ray was a damn devil, and you introduced him in a way to Tariq. So you do have something to do with it. Everyone is guilty. Everyone is implicated in how Raina was killed. From Tasha to Kanan to Tariq to hell. Well, not what to, to Tommy too. Tommy kept trying to figure shit out, but maybe not Tommy. But to Ghost, because Ghost should have killed Kanan a long goddamn time ago. And when he burned him up in the house, he should have shot him in the head first. Um, anyway, but anyway, I'll be getting all off topic. Um, Ghost, like, look, I feel like we can accomplish more together. Been working apart so how about you know what I'm saying as a as a peace offering i'll try to get your job back with the group the the club people the best the basset group um and he's like well, what about the contract like it's always things we can negotiate i'm gonna see what i can do and then they shake on it i was pissed i was utterly pissed the fuck off i was like what is this like i know that ghost is getting close to to dre to trap him because ghost I hope Ghost is thinking fast steps ahead how he used to. And he's just getting Dre in the position to trust him so they can get his ass back. I hope that's what's happening. Because truth be told, as sexy as it is to see Ghost and um, Dre in the same scene. I think Omari Hardwick is a sexy character. I think Rotimi is also sexy too. But I need Dre to die. Like, I need him dead. Like, I just can't. I cannot. I just cannot. Anyway, they shake and they gon' get that shit figured out. You know, we see Ghost after uh, Dre leaves. He calls Tariq and leaves him a message because, of course, Tariq don't answer his phone because he's a little snotty old ass kid. And he just apologizes for that night of the argument and how he said things and did things that he was just being drunk and stupid. Um, so I said things I was not proud of. Um, but I love you, son. Okay, and just call me back. Tariq ignoring the whole phone call, so I'm pretty sure he did not check the message because who checks voicemails these days? Nobody. Not at all. Not even me. Um, so Tariq is at school. Basically, he has, when he saw his mama bottle of, bottle of pills on that table, he took them with him to school. I'm surprised Tasha have not said, where the fuck my pill bottle's at? But you know what I'm saying? Tariq has them. And his roommate come in the room, and he's like, oh, man, you got these pills. We love these. We love, love, love these. Can I buy some? You know, can I buy, like, one or two, like, 20 bucks a pill? He's like, nah, man. He's like, man, come on, I'll pay for you. Like, man, I said, nah. I can see where it's going. I can see it. I'm pretty sure you can, too. But, however, he said no right now. Um, This whole, the prosecuting people, Mock and Sax, they are this malicious ass it show you know what i feel like my hair keep blowing i look so different without my glasses i think um the way they have mock sex well your mocks and sex um it shows how corrupt people can be trying to get to the truth it shows how they will be savage and they will intimidate people they will force them to say hey if you don't cooperate i will break both your legs and peel and people will think you just fell out some stairs it's the weirdest thing how they are basically just harassing people i mean just flat out harassment i'm like or or dangle their kids or their wives just dangle the way they dangle connie dying in trusty's face that he took the whole deal to, to snitch on tommy and now you have mock going to proctor's ex-wife's narcotics anonymous meeting it's shit supposed to be anonymous okay he pop up there basically intimidating her like yeah you know what i'm saying i know you have some information on your ex-husband i know you probably know who he hangs out with that is a criminal from his family or whatever and you need to tell us because if you don't um uh, we'll make sure that you never that you never see your daughter again this all in her face it, he like whispering her ear. i'm looking like bro why the fuck is you so close to me i need some personal space but you know she like forget y'all until he then said if you don't do this you will go to court to child services court or whatever and you will never see her again we will make sure of that i'm like pop you a little bitch up in here we loved you and um the fast and the furious remember him he was not to be racist the one asian guy <laughs> and fast and the furious he died at the end of i think six 
when he blew up in the car and that's how they introduced Jason Statement's character. But yeah, we loved him in there, whatever. Um, I don't like you on here, bruh. You are a petty, petty bitch. Okay, a petty, petty bitch. I don't like it. Anyway, um, again, they're asking her if he, if Proctor is social, because his family is criminal. And because when he testified under oath, he said that he does not interact with anyone from his family who is criminal. So they went to the ex-wife because they're like, you should know something and give it to us. Because if you don't, again, we're going to snatch it all away. So her ass snitch. Everybody's a goddamn snitch. So many snitches in one show. I can't, I don't know what to do about it. He shows up at Proctor's cousin's restaurant. Proctor's there talking to his cousin. Now his cousin, I think Benny, is the guy who Proctor called when he had to get the body removed one time he killed old boy the home, the security guy. So he talking to him like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? They want me to do this. I'm, I'm trying to get my license back. And his cousin like, you know, well, if you can't get the license back, you can always come to the family business. I mean, you can all day. He like, nah, I mean, I told you I'm kind of done with that or whatever, but thanks for coming through for me. He like, yeah, it's no problem. So we know that he got rid of the body and cleaned the house. And that's why Proctor, when the FBI came to, to you know, to do whatever search, they didn't find anything. So when him and his cousin walking out, and his cousin, I guess, is a known criminal, Proctor is standing right there like, I mean, no, not Proctor, Mock. Like, I thought you said, you said that you did not associate with anybody from your family who's a criminal, and here you are. He's like, motherfucker, I cannot believe you are here basically stalking me. He's kind of like, you know what I'm saying, we can do, he like, nah, man, don't threaten him, he's a federal agent, so he not even worth the time you would get for hitting him or beating him up or whatever. I would have said, just kill him. What's one more dead body? Anyway, he tells Proctor, you know, like, either help us and give us information, or I'm going to go and get a, or a court order, a warrant for you lying under oath because here you are with a criminal. But I would have said, you don't have any proof that I was with him before. This is now. You can't prove I ever saw him before, bitch. But anyway, um, he says, you know, I got, I'm going to give you 48 hours to do it or else. So what does Proctor do? Proctor goes to ghost. Like, man, look ex-wife showing some bullshit i need some drugs to give her to you know what i'm saying make her relapse real quick because she gonna she gonna relapse eventually so i just need to speed it up so I, can i get some drugs he like bruh i can't even do it i don't have it anymore can i go to tommy does tommy not have a condom now he like yeah tommy can help you so tommy gave him some drugs he then meet his ex-wife at the door of her narcotic narcotics anonymous meeting he like she's like well god damn it is is it not an anonymous anymore i guess not See, like, well, I got your alimony check, and I can't believe that you would go and snitch on me and tell them where to find me at Benny Restaurant or whatever. She take the check, and she opens it up. He put, you know, a little thing of cocaine in there. I can't believe you, you piece of shit. She throws it back at him. See, this time I'm really going to, you know, stay clean. No, you're not. No, you're not. I would have left the drug, like, on the floor, like, in the corner, because she would have came back for it. That's just me. Anyway, so she just walks in, and he walks out. He's like, oh, shit. I mean, at the end of the day... Kill her too. Kill this look. This if you kill Mock, you look kill. You can't kill everybody. Just let me stop saying kill everybody. But I mean, it's just it's everything. Nothing's going. Nothing is going right at this point. It's like <sighs> just so much. Cause now what are you gonna do? What, what can you do? You can't snitch on James. You can't snitch on Tommy. Cause if you do, one of them will murder you, and then your daughter will still end up with the crazy ex-wife. You just got you got to do something. We see, I was so thirsty. We see Dre go talk to Too Big. And the dude who looked like David Ruffin, I think his name was Spanky, he looked just like David Ruffin. I mean, just David all, you know. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you. I'm sorry, y'all. I got all this come out with the Temptations. That's a Detroit thing. Anyway, he's telling them how the Jimenez was, you know, got got arrested, but they got out, and how um, more time, you know, got killed last night, and he just kind of crazy. He then asked Two Bit, Two Bit, where were you last night? Two Bit, like motherfucker, if I wanted to kill some goddamn Torinos, Torinos, Tainos, I'd have killed your boy, Christopher. That ain't my boy. I told you that ain't my boy. I'm like, why are y'all arguing? Like girlfriend and boyfriend. What is going on here, bro? Just cut, just cut it out. Speaking like I'm so tired of y'all arguing like lovers or whatever. No, not like lovers. Y'all always arguing like it's crazy. It's, you know, just make up now. I'm like, are they boyfriend and girlfriend for real? Who knows? Um, Ian walks Christopher. 
and even he said like you know it's kind of crazy um what's going on one of my men are getting killed they're like look the Jimenez was out now you know uh Diego came here thinking that I was the one who set him up or whatever Cristobal you know anything about that so at this point Dre thinks Cristobal is setting him up with all this he don't know what's really going on he like nah I no, I'm like, that's your boy. That he like, look, just because we speak the same language does not make us friends. Like, that's not even it. He like, but you know what? You can't trust anyone in this game. You know what I'm saying? Power make people do some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's true. Cause look at Dre. Dre is a whole bunch of crazy person. He like, but you know what? Cause he's like, you know, if you want to be in power, you should have learned to speak Spanish, which is true. If you think about it, go spe- spoke different languages. Because he knew he would have to deal with people who, do, who spoke different languages. Dre barely speaks English <laughs> the right way. So, it's true. You should you should have learned another language if you wanted to be able to work with different people. It ain't Cristobal's fault that you don't understand Spanish and you don't know what they be saying when they speak in a different language. So, he then says how, um, what did he do? Oh, duh. So, um, when Cristobal leaves, like, man, you so dumb. As Cristobal's leaving, he's speaking in Spanish. So, Dre is getting more and more upset because, like, I don't know what he's saying. And all he was saying was, you know what I'm saying? He's so dumb. We taking over the world. You shouldn't say stuff like that in Spanish and not know what people saying. So, Spanky said, well, man, you know what? You need to get a translator. We have to get someone who can translate what they say. He was, excuse me, he was joking. It's another... I was on my live earlier, and it was a damn um, net on my phone, and it was another, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to go away. Anyway, it's not that many, y'all, and y'all like, oh, you need to do this, you need to, need to do that. I'm doing that, and there's way less than what it was, but it's these, it's these tools and views that be around that, that, you know, they live a little bit longer than I want them to. Anyway, matter of fact, if you have been listening this long, this is the code, and someone suggested this. Her name was... I'm going to say T-Woods because I can't pronounce her first name the correct way. The code is put in a random word, your name, your first name, and then the number of how many letters is in your name. That's it. Put that in. Cool. So that's the thing. So mine would be ragu because I can see some ragu sauce on my kitchen counter. Um, How many letters in my name? Why can't I think right now? Six, six, what's six, six, and eight? Twelve, oh, twenty. Cool. So, mine would be <laughs> Ragu J. Lee 20 because that's what is in my whole name. Anyway, so put that in. Love y'all. Okay, so when Spanky, like y'all, need to get a translator or whatever, they then say, we're going to go get a Turo. A Turo going to be the one to translate for us. They go see him and tell, how, tell him how he going to translate Everything that Diego, uh, Alicia, or Cristobal says, like, I don't think I should, I don't know if I should do that. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm like, Dre, kind of non-bro, you're not big and bad. So, they, like, kind of, like, boss him around everywhere. And, again, yeah, you know what I'm saying, do what I, do what I say you're going to do. Just do it, do it, do it. Dre, you ain't that cute, bro. Shut up. He then says how, um, Diego think I stole his gun, so you're going to do it because he think I set him up. Arturo then looks like, damn, like he knows something. He's like, what you, what you know? Spit it out. Say this shit. Say this shit. Say this shit. I'm not Dre again. You ain't like a little pussy. Anyway, he brings up how Diego would never come to that stash house. He's like, Diego would never come down. They say, but you know, um, Yurio told me that Alicia would come down all the time, but she would come dressed in disguise as a housekeeper just to kind of see what's going on, and you know, no one knew that she would do that. And he was like, oh. So then they figure out that she is the one who set Diego up and put the gun there. And so she did that. He like, all right, whatever, that's fine. So they then leave with Tolotero, meet me in an hour to meet with Diego or whatever. But when they first walked up, Arturo said, hey, you know what we're going to do now that Hermenez is locked up? He should not have known that. So when they're leaving, 2-Bit then says, how did he know they was locked up? You just told us. How? Who told him? He like, I don't know, but I think I just found out who to blame. I'm like, Alicia told him, find someone else to blame for getting us locked up. It can't be 
it can't be um, James and Ghost. So he like, since Arturo knows something that he should know, we're going to just blame him. I'm like, if you say so. Um, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy is not who he was season one. I think once Tommy got with Holly and had to kill Holly, he ain't been right ever since. You know, Ghost said to him specifically, do not speak about me in front of Teresi. Like, this, I don't exist in front of him. Don't tell him shit about what me you got going on. He told that man that. Ghost come over to talk to him. Teresi's there. Ghost, like, pause, like, are you talking about Teresi? Teresi then says, oh, you know what? I'll get out some time. I'll leave. Tommy then says, do we got to leave? Anything he can say in front of me, he can say in front of you. Ghost what she got to say. I said, now what the fuck do we have? What is going on? If you remember in season one and all in season of Moya in season one, they would not have any kind of conversation in front of anybody. Like it was all it was secret shit all day, every day. I'm like, since when did you make it okay to talk about fuck your daddy, bruh? Fuck your daddy, bruh. He's a whole rat stitch in these streets. And it's so funny because Everything that Tommy is doing is against the code of being a drug dealer. You don't include everybody in your business. You just don't do it, bro. You don't know that man. Even though he your daddy by blood, you don't know that man. Like, fuck that man. This is what I would have said. And Ghost looking like, this is some bullshit. But clearly, Tommy didn't told him whatever. So Ghost stupidly starts talking. I'm like, y'all both fucking idiots. Ghost let him know, like, look, I'm getting audited, so I can't. Um, clean your money through my club. I'm like, did you just say that you can't clean his money through your club? You just said that in front of Teresi? You stupid too. I would have said, you know what, Tommy? I was come over to say that, um, fucking that, that, you know, Tasha and Angela had a conversation and I don't know what to do. What do you think? I would have just tried to change the story in some kind of way and not make it about me, but he didn't do that. So at this point in time, Teresi says, yeah, you know, because Tommy is, of course, is mad. My eyelashes fell. I felt it tickling. I didn't make a wish first. Anyway, um, Teresi then says, yeah, you know, he he can't run money. You know, that's this isn't a good time. Ghost like, bruh, I don't need no backup. I'm good, bruh. Leave it alone. So, at this point in time, Teresi's like, you know what? I'm going to leave. I'm going to get up in time. I need to go hang out with Connie. Tommy pissed. I, this is, I'm fucked, you know. Jason's gonna really get me now because I don't have any connect. I don't, he's just all fucked in the game. Ghost says, Tommy, man, I'm sorry. You know what, Ghost? You're always sorry. You're always sorry when you change your mind. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. So, Teresa leaves with them. And he goes to see Mock and Sax. Like, y'all so dumb. You know, y'all get my cover blown. They're like, we don't care. We just want our man. Like, we don't care what happens to you. He's like, if y'all keep jumping on every little bit of information I give y'all, y'all gonna get me killed. And y'all won't get nothing. Like, you can't, if I give some information, you can't then immediately do something to try to catch it. Like, look, you know, give me time to give you some big information. Because if not, nothing's gonna happen. And they're gonna just kill me and y'all will be out of a, out of a, out of a snitch. So, they said, well, alright, fine. But remember, you know, you can't back out now. He ain't gonna back out. He a, he a snitch at this point in time, but whatever. We then see, um, he, he because he heard Tommy and Ghost talking, he heard Tommy say he doesn't have, like, a, um, what word he said? He don't have a something. Not an industry. What did he say? He don't have, like, a way to sell the drugs. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? He don't have that. So, he comes to Tommy's apartment, and he has bags of oodle noodles. I call ramen noodles or ramen noodles oodle noodles so he comes with little packs of oodle noodles and he's like you know this is the whole pipeline or whatever this is how we would smuggle phones and stuff into the prisons you know you can use this to smuggle your drugs he's like you know now that sammy isn't working with vincent you know what i'm saying he's in for you to use this and we can sell we 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 yeah we can sell drugs this way whoever thought i i would be smuggling stuff into prison when i'm out of prison now they smugglers. I'm like, Tommy is just a fucking... Now Tommy is in, is in business with his snitch of a daddy and old ass Uncle Sammy. I'm like... And they setting him up. Every You're getting played by your daddy who's a snitch and your punk ass Uncle Sammy. Who don't even like you, bruh. I can't believe you got me working with him. He like, don't worry about it. Don't... He don't... <laughs> 
Sammy was sent to Teresi. I can't believe you got me working with this with this person or whatever. Um, it's some bullshit. Like, no, don't even worry about it. I'm saying we're gonna make some money, and then the feds gonna get gonna get everything they need from him. Again, they set him up for the whole okie doke. Man, I just can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Um, Ghost and Ta Tasha has a conversation. Uh, Ghost and Tasha have a conversation. You know, Ghost tell her how you know he understands why she did not trust him and why she had to go work with Anthony. Like, I get why you did that. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been there for you with how I should have been. You know, I, I took a vow with you and I haven't upheld those vows. I have not protected the family like I should. You know what I'm saying? He said, at the end of the day, you had to protect the family from me and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I said, okay, is this a turning point? Like, he looks... Like a different, he looks like a changed man. He's only in up to his bullshit. Tasha seems surprised. Like, oh my God, he's really, you know what I'm saying, opening up and being honest or whatever. She's like, where's this coming from? He's like, you know what I'm saying, I went to the path and now you put me out. And, you know what I'm saying, I told him I wanted to be a better man. He then said, you know, it's been so hard for me with Raina's death and it's been really easy for me to blame everyone else for it happening. Like, but I feel like it was really my finger on that trigger that killed her. And, you know what I'm saying, I know it will take you time to forgive me. Um, and she's like, see, that's the problem, Ghost. This is not about you. You don't mean that shit. You're just saying it, you know, to make yourself feel better. And it will take a long time before I forgive you. Now, see, I see things differently. I feel like... If that man feel like he's to blame for that because he wasn't there in the household, that's not selfish of him and that isn't him trying to make himself be the victim or only think about himself. It's the truth. Had he not been in jail, had he not been, been fucked with Angela, had he been there with y'all and watching Tariq, he could have prevented her murder. So in a way, that's, he, he needs to feel guilty. He needs to feel guilty it's I, it's honestly absolutely true and the bad part about it too is tasha can too because tasha was so busy fucking around with silver ass she wasn't paying much attention to Tariq either no one was paying attention to Tariq or orena neither one of them so at, at the end of the day it's i don't think it's wrong for him to feel like he it was his fault because it it was a part of his fault anyway um she was trying to walk away. He like, you know what, for Tasha, Tash, T. You know what I'm saying? How did you know that you could have trusted Angela with all the information? And she said, because she still loves you. She does. She still. I'm looking like that. Do some shit for your wife to tell you that your mistress still loves you, and she can walk away without busting you in the damn head. We then see Ghost at Angela's house. I'm not sure why he was there. They were looking at some files. I was assuming they were the files from the case on Ray Ray, but they ain't looked through shit. Like, so I don't know the point of having the files on the desk, but whatever. So they both say how they don't think that they should try again. Um, because how the breakup was so hard. Like, oh, the breakup almost killed me. It almost killed me too. What the fuck ever. And they like sitting all close together and stuff. And she's like, how do I know I can trust you? And then he said, they kiss. It's a hard ass passionate kiss. But again, we don't care. He then says, you know what I'm saying? He stops from kissing her and gets up to walk away. See them. So I feel like you can trust me if I'm a changed man. And then he leaves. Look, we don't care about Ghost and Angela getting back together. I need them to be over each other. Like no one gives zero fucks, two fucks, three fucks, four fucks, five fucks about Angela and like this ain't about them. I don't need it to be about them. And I'm like, uh, just don't. I don't, if I feel like if Ghost and Angela in any kind of way end up together, this whole show was pointless. It was pointless. It, I also don't think that he sh she get he should get back with Tasha. I think Angela needs to die. Truthfully, she does. And anyway, that's what I feel. Um, because if they get back together, it kind of brings to the point of he married the wrong person. He cheated on his wife. All this badness happening in the, in, in in the middle of it. But at the end of the day. They are really in love. They end up together. This this is not a fucking love story. Like it can't. If either 
I, I also don't want to end with ghosts in prison. Like I don't I don't want ghosts to be in prison. I want him to pay the ultimate sacrifice he needs to. Angela needs to die. Um, Tasha can move on, and Ghost can have his clubs in some sort of way. Um, but I don't need them as a couple for me to feel good at the end of this. Or I, and I don't need Tasha and I mean Tasha and him to be together. He need to be single as fuck, okay? And he need to be. He can continue to be the biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York, as he said at the end of season one. Is what I think it can be. But we shall see. So we do see Tasha at the police station talking to Rod Rodriguez. This whole thing, you know, we see her talking to Rodriguez, who was the IA agent. And she f thinks she's going down there to discuss her gun and Raina's murder. We see Tamika and Sax and all of them behind the thing because, again, she's working. They're all working together. But she's questioning, questioning Tasha about the gun, where was the gun, when did she know the gun was missing. She says when the gun came back from the FBI people, how they put it, gave it to me in a box. But so much stuff had happened. It was so many people in at the house that she didn't even put it back in her safe. That she put it in a closet in her house. And it wasn't until after days after Raina was murdered that she realized it was gone. And then she reported it. So, um, she then says, if no one can cooperate your story that you never put in your safe, then... You know, you're a suspect. Anyone in your house who had access to that gun is a suspect. She then says, so if no one can say that you that you put it in your closet where anyone could have taken it, you know what I'm saying? We can't really believe that story. She then says, my lawyer, he saw me do it. Terry Silver, he can cooperate my story. Well, if he can, then he would be a, a key eyewitness in this or whatever. And he, so she, I'm like, you nice and brought Terry into it. Anyway, the whole question thing was basically her saying, we don't think you did it. We think Ray Ray killed your daughter. Um, and we think your husband went back and killed Ray Ray with your gun. And then his girlfriend, who he's probably still having an affair with, is setting you up for the fall. That's why they knew your gun was loose and goosey and they took it and they used it to kill it. That's why Angela at the scene pointed out the bullet in the wall. Okay? So this is stuff she didn't know that Angela was the one who pointed at, who pointed out the bullet. She did not know how Angela was the one going to the school to talk to the principal, you know, call a regular job, like did all these things that she did not know. Mainly how she was the one who found the bullet, pointed it out and told them, hey, there's a bullet right there. She didn't know any of that stuff. So, Rodriguez is like, you know what I'm saying? We think James killed Ray Ray. Again, as is covering it, covering it up, and they're setting you up to take the fall, and that's what's going on. So, if you can just admit that your husband killed Raymond Jones, Officer Jones, and that Angela is helping him to do it, we would give you full immunity. And she's like, so as they're talking to her, she's like, oh my God, I didn't know this. I didn't know how she looked all confused and shit. You know, she says, look, my husband did not kill Raymond Jones. Because, and she ain't lying. I want them to give her a doctor detective test because she isn't lying. Her husband didn't do it. Her fucking son did it. And I'm like, how do you not think it could be the son? Mm -hmm. But they're so blinded by they wanted to get Angela, they're not even thinking about the fact that she isn't covering for James. She's covering for their fucking son, but whatever. Anyway, we then see Tariq. Tariq is still being a... Oh, he's still being so stupid. He's at school, hanging out with Kanan. Hanging out with Kanan. Anytime the three amigos are not together, they're usually making some kind of fuck-up mistakes, if you ask me. Him and Kanan riding around, getting it, this stupid, just hanging out. And Kanan saying how, you know what I'm saying, you know, he's telling Kanan how it's hard for him. He, you know, he mad as, you know, fuck his parents. I don't care about my parents. Um, he's like, you can't really say that much because they're the ones paying for your school. He's like, yeah, and I can't do it on my own because I ain't got no money. And my, my hookup thing, I didn't fuck that up. So, you know what I'm saying, I'm just kind of stuck out here. He then says, well, at least your dad killed Ray Ray. And Trick say, he ain't do that shit. I killed Ray Ray. I said this. Tariq is beyond the dumbest person on this earth. When he said that, I'm like, you told your mama you was going to be in school and not say shit. And you up in school telling Kanan all the... Oh, my, oh he's so fucking dumb. 
anyway, at this point, came to now know Tommy and Ghost lied to him about the whole Ray thing, but whatever. He told Tariq, I'm sorry, man. You did the right thing. You know what I'm saying? You took him out. It was good. Just bad. They then go to somebody's house by his school where t um, Kanan is like delivering drugs or whatever. Taking Tariq with him. I'm like, what the fuck is this? They get to the little white guy house. It was a white guy who then said like, yeah, I know we're talking on the phone, but you know what I'm saying? Um, and they must have met in prison because he brings up, yeah, prison this, prison that. Things aren't how they were in prison. So they knew him from prison. Um, he then says how, what we discussed on the phone, you know, I can't take that much. Like, we need to renegotiate, renegotiate some stuff. He like, we ain't renegotiating shit. Like, if you have an issue, that's on you. But, you know what I'm saying? I need my money, whatever. And what our agreement was going to be our agreement. Like, Canaan, you know, this isn't how things were in prison. Man. You can't do things like that. Canaan then proceeds to beat the crap out of him in front of Tariq. And Tariq is looking like, like, yeah, man, get that money. So, Tariq picks the money up. And him and Kanan walks away as the guy is sitting there whimpering and crying because he just got beaten up really, really badly by these people. When they're trying to leave, the guard at the gate stops them. Like, you know what I'm saying? What's your name? Who are you visiting? Because we got a complaint, a noise complaint. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know who you are. Tariq then fakes an asthma attack after telling the guard that he was there visiting their teacher. And because he's faking an asthma attack, the guard said, well, go ahead, go, go, go. He's like, I ain't got my inhaler. I'm like, he like, man, why you do that? You know what I'm saying? People can get popped by, you know what I'm saying, overreacting or, or, or having a nervous thing, whatever. He like, man, your truck was hanging lower, so you want them to come search your car? He like, you don't miss shit. You know what I'm saying? You a good kid. I'm like, no, he's a fucking idiot. But whatever. Um, That honestly pissed me off. We do see um, Ghost and Dre meet up again. Basically, now they call the truce, okay? And Dre then says, well, no. Ghost says, but before that, I need a favor. I need you to kill Jason. He like, time is connect? Okay. But I need a favor too. I need you to take out Diego. And then they both disagree. I'm looking like, now what? How this shit happen? What the fuck is going on here? I, I, but the good thing is, him asking Drake to take out Jason saves Tommy. So at the end of the day, Ghost is still in his, at the end of the day trying to save Tommy. But him asking Ghost to take out Diego, I mean, that doesn't really save anyone except his, him because he don't like Diego. But whatever. I, I was completely confused, but it was what it was. You know, we see D-Ray has Oturo, you know, at this meeting or whatever, using him as a puppet. Okay, he's like, you know, act, do what I said to do, what I said do and we'll both walk out of here laugh. He then makes Arturo, he say, this is who sold y'all out to the feds, talking to Alicia. He's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Tell him, tell him what you told me. Um, you know, Uriel told me that uh, Diego knows that you put his gun there and that you set him up and now Diego knows. So, and he gonna want revenge on you. I'm looking like, what the fuck is going on here? She's like, fuck. Oh my God. So, Dre, like, you know, Diego won't prevent on you, but I know someone who, who's planning to kill Diego. But if you want, I can call him off or we can let it play out. She's like, nope, just let it play out. Let's see what's going to happen or whatever. And then he then says, Dre then says, Arturo, he fucked up. We can't trust him. And they, she was like, get rid of him. And they kill Arturo, but he dumb because he kept on saying, no, 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 no. You should have stopped yelling no. I would have said, Dre told me to say all this. He forced me to say any of this. He set this whole thing up. I didn't kill Lorenzo. He killed Lorenzo. I would have snitched my whole life. Away. That's that's See, that's when you become a snitch. When someone sets you up for some shit that you didn't do, you then snitch. Okay, you tell her all the fucking business. But nope, he didn't say shit besides, no, 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 no. As they set his ass on fire. Okay, he was hot then. Um... We see Tariq back at school, and now he's selling pills. He, he sold his roommate the whole bottle of pills from his mama for his all the money in the, in the kid's wallet. He then texts Kanan and say, um, it's a market for the, for the pills up here. You got any more? I'm looking like, you old dumb fucking idiot. Anyway, we see Tamika and Sax in the office. And Tamika walking like him and I'm casting the, the case on St. Patrick, we don't have anything like it's just too much, and we can't. We're not going further. We're not going any further with it. 
mock then walk in, hand sacks of things that this is from from um the file clerk lady um and then says how and also the audit into jane st patrick was canceled before we can get to him well only people was closed before we can get to him however there's something corrupt with councilman tate Sachs cut him off like it doesn't matter because she's pulling the plug and he's like we can't do that we have all the stuff so sax is opening up his envelope from the file clerk he he looks pat like oh fuck crazy what the fuck what the fuck, what the fuck? he pulled a file from the from the folders it's the ballistics report. It's the ballistics. It's the paper ballistics report that they had. Angela only deleted the file. She did not go down to the whatever the file room and get the actual paper copies of the file. And it showed the ballistics of her gun and how her gun matches the ballistics from Ray Ray. So now they know the Tasha's gun killed Ray Ray. Speak like like that's corruption she knew it and she hid it and she buried the file and that's why she shut down the the investigation into ray ray's murder because she knew the gun came from james and them honey tamika went to another file picked out a picture of angela and then put it on the floor with all the other suspects i'm like bitch now she's a suspect too and she has no fucking idea i said "Ooh, jesus so the ending scene was kind of cool we see we're not kind of cool but it was it was you know tasha not tasha ghost and angela are at the house the, the penthouse talking and you know what i'm saying they're waiting for tasha to get back from been be, from being questioned about the gun stuff they both agree how they should not try again or whatever but go say if we did try again like we would need to be up front we would need to be honest and tell tasha up front like we both would have to let her know that as they're having that conversation here come tasha coming in she's stubborn she's pissed off baby i cannot believe you angela i thought you were being truthful with me like what the fuck you were the one who found the bullet and pointed it out to the people or whatever they think that you that jane that you killed ray ray and that you're hiding it and they offer me immunity to stitch on both of y'all ghost like is this true she's like i did not know it was your bullet i thought ghost killed um ray ray and i never thought i thought he would be too, he would be smart enough to not use your i don't think the gun would lead back to y'all i didn't know it was Tariq when i pointed it out which i mean i guess it's true you would think of ghost that he would leave, use a you know a gun that was you know not traceable anyway um he like it's kind of crazy or whatever so she's like wait immunity they offered you immunity and she's like yes and you know what i'm saying the the only reason I did not take it was because it would not say Tariq. So, I'm going to have Terry lie for me because I don't need y'all help no more. He likes Terry. Why would he do that? Because he loves me. He loves me more than he loves he than you ever could. And then she's like, I can't believe you. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to leave y'all. She's like, no. You two stay here. I'm leaving. And then she walks out and leaves Ghost Angela alone in the penthouse. I said, bitch. I mean, them was some bond. For one, now ghosts know that Terry and Tasha was having a fucking affair too. That Tasha was also in her damn, uh, the car with knocked off her damn coochie all, all town by Terry. Because again, he did not know that. So usually it was a bomb being dropped on Tasha about something that Ghost did. This is the first, remember the second time that Ghost got a bomb dropped on him about Tasha. The first time was when he found out that she was fucking Sean. Now this time he found out that she fucking got him lawyer. She loved work for the help. Anyway, that is I just killed the net. Yay! Y'all know this same one get my damn nerve all day. Um they big wipes. But yeah, that's how the episode went off. Um with her leaving them there to just be there. Um th if you have been watching for this long, you know, thank you. If you've been watching for this long, you know, put thank you. In something I don't know I'm just happy if y'all watching the whole time I'm done I'm going to bed it is 4 08 in the morning this should be up in about an hour um yeah peace <laughs>